For today's video, we are going to do some mobile development. And I don't mean developing for mobile, I mean using a mobile device to develop. I am going to code and deploy a web app while using nothing more than a single phone. And my weapon of choice, the iPhone 11 Pro Max S Plus Limited Edition, 256 gigabytes. There's an issue when I make videos. When I make a YouTube video, I have no idea if the thumbnails are interesting or not. I wish I can A-B test them, but I can't. As you know, thumbnails are extremely important because it can make or break your video. No matter how good your video is, if it doesn't get clicked, it doesn't get watched. So I wish I can test my thumbnails to a small audience before I publish it. So I had an idea. Why not create a web app where people can decide between two thumbnails, which would they rather click, and use that information to build a ranking system of your thumbnails and other people's thumbnails so you can know how well you rank against others. Probably wouldn't work because people don't want to click dumb thumbnails for no reasons. It doesn't matter. It's a pet project. Uh, whatever, it's settled. We are ranking thumbnails. And to do that, I need a ranking algorithm. Yep, I need an algorithm. Give each thumbnail a base rating of 1,400. At any given time, thumbnail A has rating RA, thumbnail B has rating RB. When any two thumbnails are matched up, there's an expectation of who will win based on their current rating, right? Yep, and those expectations are expressed this way. All right, let's code it. We're gonna need a stack, and I think I found the perfect candidate. No JS. She is a wild card. Sometimes she makes no fucking sense. But goddamn, I'd be lying to you if I said she isn't high performing. With that single threaded event driven architecture, you cannot deny her abilities to handle multiple simultaneous connections. Alone, she's pretty impressive already, but paired with a web framework, mind blowing. And nobody else makes Node.js shine brighter than this one. Express, a lightweight Node.js web application framework. Together, they are the definition of synergy. And then there's MongoDB, the supplier. Stores and distributes data like no one else. Highly available, highly scalable. Finally, AngularJS, the face of the operation. If you ever need a con man, he's your guy. And together, they form the meat stack. So basically, we want a web app server, Node.js web app server. You know, we, we use Express also. And then for the front end, we're gonna want Angular. So I'm essentially creating a simple diagram of a typical mean stack as a skeleton, and then filling in more things like my model schema. So for our thumbnail, we're gonna be needing the URL of the YouTube URL, and then maybe like a rating so that we can actually rank them. Maybe their title, and then also the image URL so that we can actually access the thumbnail. So that's gonna be our motto. Now I continue to put details and start expanding by adding things like the services that I will use and how these services will interact with each other. For example, we have Heroku, a platform as a service to host our Node.js application so we don't need to deal with servers. MLab, a database as a service so we don't need to maintain our own database an AWS server so I can actually use a normal operating system like Ubuntu, since iOS isn't made to code on. You're not gonna be able to use your phone as a computer, but you can SSH into that AWS server, and you can do that with an app called Terminus. I think it will be easier than I thought because once you SSH into your AWS server, you're essentially controlling a computer and you can follow any tutorial as if you were on a desktop and just code like you would. And voila, the diagram of our infrastructure. All right, so I've set all my cameras up, finally. Okay, that took a lot more effort than I thought. So let's start coding. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do 
As you know, I will be coding the whole app using only my phone. So from searching on the internet to coding and deploying the app, everything has to be done on the phone. So my goal is to set up a workable development environment and be able to push to some sort of production environment. So my plan is to do the following. Generate a key pair for my phone and an AWS server. Launch a AWS EC2 using my web browser on my phone. SSH into my EC2 using my phone. Push a starter Node.js app onto Heroku for production. Set up Nodemon to develop faster locally. And last but not least, just code the entire app. Easy. All right, let's see how I'm doing. Copy that. Copy. All right, and then we can generate. Wow, this is this is not very good on mobile, to be honest. Well, I mean, it's it's not their fault. It's not meant to be on mobile, but okay. So then now we're gonna import keys. So basically I import the key pair into AWS so that I can use it when I launch a new EC2 instance, but launching it isn't quite as easy with the UI on the phone. Oh, I can't see anything. I can't see shit. Okay, well, um, I could see the kind of, I could kind of see the symbols. I want Ubuntu, so, oh, that's one. I think that's 18. Okay, I want the 16.04, ah, this is it, I think. Wait, all right, cool, I can't see shit. Okay, these buttons don't work. So, for this is our first obstacle. Um, oh, let's try this. Okay. All right, there we go. Easy. Okay, so we're just gonna launch this. After I configured all my ports to be open to any IP address, because I'm promiscuous like that, I launched my EC2 and took a little ASMR break while I wait for it to boot up. I then configured a new host for Termius so I can SSH into my AWS server. On my AWS server, I installed Node.js, installed Tmux, pushed a starter app to Heroku, and got Nodemon to work so I can quickly test my app. Indexes. Okay, cool. Let's change, oh, let's change the word getting started. Let's do right Joma here. Okay, and then what we do now is we save the file. Okay, so now we save the file, we refresh this. Oh, excellent, Joma started on Heroku, excellent. All right, so now we have it. So we can code here, we could use Vim to code, and then we could like use Nodemon to keep running it, and we could look at this link to see if it works or not. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a break, cause like that took way too long for what's supposed to take two minutes, but I, because I did it on a phone, it took super long. I mean, I haven't figured out all the tricks yet, so maybe I'll figure that out while I code it. So, um, yeah, okay. I'll work on it. The code can be separated into three parts. First, the backend, which I copy pasted from this tutorial. I just replaced bare by thumb and modified the API appropriately for my needs. Then for the web page, I just needed a simple bootstrap template. A few modifications and some light CSS was sufficient. Lastly, our AngularJS code. I put my data binds in the right places and I was able to connect my application data to the dome.
this. So, so basically, my left thumb and my kind of my right thumb hurts, but mostly my left. And um, yeah, I, I think it's because I've been coding a project on my phone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's for a video, so so I had to like code the whole project, like a coding project on my phone, and then every time like I swipe to go to like Chrome and stuff like that, that's where it hurts, like when I do this, right? Um, okay. Um, when did it start? Uh, well, like maybe like two weeks ago, because that's when I started doing the coding project. Oh, okay. Well, have you considered that maybe it's related to how often you're using your phone? Yeah, but I mean, like, is is there like any way where we can like type without pain? Because like I still have to do that project. Mm, right. No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I think you just have to stop using your phone so much. I don't think I can finish this app on my phone. Unfortunately, my thumb hurts and it hurts a lot. Every time I swipe or like I type, there's just this really sharp pain, right? This really, really sharp pain. And I don't think I can continue doing this. Like, it's probably not possible. But I mean, there is this one thing that I can do, but I really, really didn't want to rely on this. But I don't think I have any other choice now, so. This is great. I am loving it. Oh my God, I am blazing fast. Oh my God. This is so good. Oh wow. This is probably the best thing that ever happened to me. All right, I am done. Let me show you a little demo now. Okay, let's go here. So the app is pretty simple. As you can see, I'm clicking these thumbnails and each time I click a thumbnail, it means the match has been won by that thumbnail. And if you click at the top, you get to the result page and here you can see the results of your ranking. You can see the ratings and it's ordered by ratings, you know, cool, cool, cool. You can add more thumbnails. Actually, I'm gonna delete all these thumbnails first. Mm -hmm. So here, I pasted a YouTube URL and I get their thumbnail right here. I could also add my own thumbnail that is not attached to a YouTube video. You know, give it a title, Tiger King. And there you go. And if you look at the main page, you'll see that these two thumbnails are going head to head. All right, and then after giving a pink a win, you'll see that the score has increased. So that's pretty much it. Very simple app with lots of potential to add more features. But for now, I'll just keep it at that. Keep it simple since it's supposed to be a toy project so I can show off my phone dev skills. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad it's over. Um, yeah, I'm so done with my phone. Like my eyes hurt, my thumbs hurt. You know, I think I need a digital cleanse. And um, I think that's what I'm gonna do. You know, I think uh, I'm starting to appreciate disconnecting myself from the digital world. You know, not be so binded by technology and the internet. I mean, especially social media, right? So, you know, maybe this is a good thing. Like maybe finally I could, you know, get some reading done. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs>